So in the last logic analyzer video, one of the comments mentioned using SIGROC, which is an open source software to, with, to use with instruments like logic analyzers and data loggers, instead of using the proprietary software that we were using. And part of it was because it's a, you know, it's a clone, so you're not really paying for the software, or helping the software developers, but, you, but you're using this cheap clone. Um, so I decided to look this SIGROC up and I, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. I, I, it's cool that it supports so many different um, products and hardware because then you, if you get to know how to use it, you can use it with all the different types. Um, and it has a big selection of support. So we're going to talk about how to install it because there's some pitfalls in installing the software. And then we're also going to be going through um, a comparison between that and like the Sally brand software that you can use with the same hardware. So I'm going to quick download this. Um, Pulse View, it's called, but it's by SIGROC and it's all open source, so it's it's like free to use and, and no problem there. Um, so I'm gonna download it, and then we're gonna be talking about um, some other ways to use lab equipment and test instrument equipment because there's some other options too um, that's that's not proprietary. So we'll save this, and then we're gonna click go to supported hardware. So there's all these are different options of things you can use. Um, for logic analyzers, and a lot of these are like clones. They're clones of other, you know, paid versions. So interesting enough, even the Picket 2, which is well known by Microchip for programming, but it also can be a three-channel logic analyzer. That's pretty cool. I mean, right here, three-channel logic analyzer. So there's some really cool things you can do with this. Again, like it's only three channels. So it'd be better to get one of these clones. So we downloaded the, the software. And we're going to install it now. Yep, sure. Go ahead and install it. Next, next. I'm not going to install the sample data. Move it now, install. So now that it's done, it should be done installing. So I'm going to go next. We'll register it. And now we're going to open the software. And it was not working for me earlier um, because I didn't have the Microsoft installed. So actually, it worked on this computer um, because I, I already have the, this Microsoft, and I'm going to go over there. So I'll minimize this. So if you go to installing it, one of the things that the pitfall is is if you don't have the software. Um, right here, if you scroll down, the MS VCR 100 DLL, it was not on my computer, a different computer I installed this on. And so if you don't have this installed correctly, and there's some other things they said that you'll have problems. So it says install the Microsoft Visual C++ 2010. Very frustrating because I didn't realize that that was what I was missing. And so every time I tried to open it, you'd click Pulse View, try to open it, and you'd get nothing. But now it's actually opening. Like you can see, and I'm actually opening another instance of it. Um, so just keep in mind, you might have to go there. And I also tried clicking this link, and it... It was like it brought me to nothing. Like, we, we're sorry, this isn't available. But if you go ahead and search for it, uh, if you search for it, it will show up here, um, and you can install it, and then it, and then it works. So I, it depends on if you've already had it installed. You might not even realize that. Um, and so I installed it, and it, it worked. But like I said, this computer didn't need that. If you install this on Linux, you can just download the Apple image, and then you might need some other drivers depending on what, uh, device you're using. So now we have it installed and now we're going to try it out. If you just go to hit run, it's just going to show us some demo device that shows data, okay? And it supports analog data as well as digital. And so does the Celia. I don't even know how to say it. Um, but the other brand that works with this same logic analyzer. And so normally I wouldn't think about using the logic analyzers with analog data, but um, certainly you can. And then at that point you're basically using it like an oscilloscope. I'm going to close session one, yes, and then I'm going to click new and then device, and then what I found out, it's the FX2LAFW, and it's basically this generic one that works with um, the Cypress, like some Cypress brand chips, chipsets. So then I just scan for devices, it shows up, and boom, you're ready to go, okay? And if we hit, and I also have some serial being sent to it connected on channel D0, so if you hit play or run, it shows the data. And by 
scrolling the mouse wheel, you can zoom in on the data. Okay, now just take a quick step back. Okay, so FX2LA is, I mean, as you can read for yourself, it's an open source, you know, Cypress chip um, driver, essentially. And it sounds like it's, it's open source, so basically anybody with a Cypress chip can get this up and working. Um, and then there's a bunch of different clones and stuff. I mean, people cloning and upon a clone, you know, upon a clone. So, I mean, it is, it's crazy. But there's so many options, and I was not aware of all these different options. Um, and so, essentially, my understanding is, like, you can use the hardware, you know, almost any hardware with this new FX2. Not any hardware, but obviously within reason. And uh, so this is an option if you don't want to use, like, a proprietary, proprietary software. So back to here. So we have it connected, it's ready to go, we have data coming in. So now I'm gonna uh, do a decoder so we can see the data easily um, in, a, in a readable format. So I'm gonna do UART, UART, synchronous, so we'll add that and then it adds it down here. And then what you can do is you have to pick your channel. So I'm just gonna say, hey, my receive line is D0 and I have it set to 9600 for the bud rate. And then the last thing I want to do is change the data format to be ASCII because I have it readable format. And then I'm going to save it. And then if you look down here, you can grab and just kind of grab and drag. You can see the data is not of any use, really. And so what I found was that if I have this 20 kilohertz, it's not fast enough, apparently. So if I change it to 200, I can run it. And I get all these data chunks. And then it says micro start electronics. And then it has some unreadable end characters. So it's pretty cool. I mean, this is all open source. So it's not like proprietary. It's not anything crazy. So this is kind of a comparison. And you can see, I mean, the data, you can still see the data up here. You can move these around. So I can, you can grab this UR, move it up here, kind of organ reorganize it. If you open it, and I don't know if it's going to let me connect to it right away since the other one's already connected. Yeah. It was unable to connect, so I'm just going to unplug it, plug it back in. And now they did that, released the other one, and we can connect. And if you hit play, um, we might have to open a new session and get all our channels back. Hide channel, we want, we want channel D0. So if we hit play, we get your data. I mean, it's a very similar, it's a very similar uh, interface as the other one. I think this looks a little more polished and modern, but I mean, at the end of the day, who cares? You can, this, this one's almost just as good. Um, so I, I, I think it's pretty neat, neat, neat software. I'd like to try it out with some more devices um, besides this one. But now you've seen a comparison side by side. And other than the fact that you might have to install the Microsoft DLLs and stuff, it's pretty sweet. So I like it, and that's all we have for today.